Welcome back to the Contractor Marketing Show. I'm your host, Matt Tebow, and today we've got a very special guest. We've got Tom Reber. Um, I feel like I'm a little bit in the presence of a, a mega influencer, maybe right now in the contractor <laughs> space. Um, I know that Tom, he's you know founded the Contractor Fight, um, which is a phenomenal program. And I know that you do a lot of stuff with marketing and sales and um, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Matt. It's great to be here, man. I, I love talking marketing, man. So it's it jazzes me up. I get I get pumped about it. So, so it, it's such it's such needed thing. And uh, and I think there's a lot of opportunity for contractors to get better. So I'm, I'm ready, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, you know, guys, if for whatever reason you don't know Tom, um, I would say that, you know, we're quite blessed to have him today on the show because I think that if you're tuning in right now and you want to learn a little bit more about how do I take my marketing, my sales to the next level, and you're really just looking for that kick in the butt, um, just from watching some of your content, Tom, like I think that uh, we're going to get some really good insights. So I'm going to start you off with a broad question just because I'm kind of curious of your view on it. But like to you, what's marketing mean to you? Well, I think marketing is a story. Mm. You know, it's, you know, to me, marketing and brand are kind of hand in hand. You know, it's, you could say that marketing is everything that happens up until a sales call. Yeah. And then everything that happens after you're doing the job, right? You know, it's the experience. So it's all these things. So I think all these things collectively, you know, they tell a story. Everything we do, everything we don't do sends a message, tells a story. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, just broadly, that's, that's really what marketing is about. What I know that you talk a lot around what story do you want to be told, right? Because yep. in the absence of you telling the story, people fill in their own blanks. So for sure, and that's usually not good. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I know that you talk a lot about um, like values and communicating mm -hmm. the company values that you have in your marketing. Just curious, like, just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, you could go all the way back to. Seth Godin's book, Purple Cow, if you've ever read that, you know, it's if you're driving down the road and, you know, for those that aren't familiar and, and you're going through farm country and you see this farm on the right, this on the left, and there's all these cows and horses out there and they're brown and white and black and whatever. And you come up over a hill and off in the distance, you see a purple cow standing in a field. Yeah. You're going to stop the car. You're going to get out. You're going to like take pictures of the thing. You're going to have it behind you doing selfies it because it's different right and so mm. um so i think the the you know and, and this isn't original to me like this is um you know guys like john jance from duct take marketing and seth mm -hmm. godin and this and that in fact john's gonna be one of our workshop presenters at our event in september this year which is pretty oh, cool nice. but anyway it you know they'll all tell you the best marketers will tell you it's not about being better it's about being different yeah. you know when you try to make a better you know offer in an ad like you do ads right like it's yeah. okay you know it oftentimes and if they don't if they're not working with somebody like you who actually knows how to do this yeah they it's a race to the bottom right yeah. and so instead of spending your time there i really want to help people focus on being different in their marketing and so one of those tactics that we encourage people is you know share your values meaning um mm. you know share your values your culture and your marketing so one example would be um you know here in the contractor fight one of our values i'm looking on my wall here is is called earn confidence we know mm -hmm. that every day we have to get up and earn the confidence of our clients you know what we did yesterday is good or bad or you know if it was a win doesn't matter right we got to pay the rent today and what we say we're going to do tomorrow doesn't matter so it's just one of our things so you know, if I were back in the painting contractor days where we were doing hundreds of jobs a year, if earn confidence was one of our company values, I would go on site. And if my, I walk on site and you see the home is, you know, interior, it's covered, it's plastic. The grand piano has got plastic in a room that you're not even painting. Cause we all know that paint likes to wander right, right. for some reason, you know um, it's the way things are set up, the shop area, the work site looks clean you snap a picture of that or you do a quick little live video and you just go, you know, one of our values here in ABC painting is earned confidence. And I'm so fired up when I walk onto a job site and I see this being lived out, right? 
Or you could even flip it and be authentic. And if, if the job site is a mess, you could even tell that story. And a lot of people are afraid to do that, but it's like, hey, every business yeah. has its issues. I've realized today I'm grateful that I showed up here because this isn't dialed in the way we want to do it at ABC Construction. Yeah. You know, so it gives us an opportunity to get better this week. And that's how you frame it. So, um, you know, you can, when, mm. when you catch an employee living out of value, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, you, you know, one of ours is positive peeps only, right? You can take a picture of your employee on the job site with a smile and go, one of the things I love about Matt is every day he shows up, no matter what's going on around him outside of work, he's giving, he's a team player. He's always got a smile nice. and makes like people it. feel better, yeah. you know, and this makes running this business so much easier on me. So that's what I mean. Like, it's just different yeah. because people buy from people, yeah. right? And the more I believe that you can show people what you believe, they have an opportunity to opt in or out of that. Go, I believe that too. I want to know more or not for me, you know, in yeah. the fight here, I'm not for everybody, right? Yeah. You know, I'm, I get a little feisty from time to time and, and, um, and, you know, a lot of people just aren't into that and that's totally cool. But yeah. you know, those who do, you know, they're all in. Yeah. Um, you touched on a couple things there. One of our favorite ads to run for clients is we call it a selfie video ad, where mm -hmm. in conjunction with a lot of the pictures of their work, like what you were talking about before and after pictures, et cetera, we'll ask our clients to record a video of them doing a selfie being like, hey, what's going on, you guys? It's Tom here. I just wanted to walk you through one of our recent projects yeah. and like just kind of build a little bit more of that personalized approach yeah. to it. Oh, like this part was really hard, but like the client wanted it like this. And just like going into the detail and such and just um, creating that personal effect, right? Um, sure. What would you say to some of the contractors based off of what we were just talking about there? Because both of us talk to a lot of contractors, obviously. Um, I hear some guys, they'll be like, well, no one in my like no one in my city really, you know, buys based off of that stuff. It's always based off of price. Or, mm -hmm. you know, I'll talk to some guys and they'll be like, man, like, you can't really grow a contracting business right now because you know um you know we were talking to one guy and he was saying like oh there's like so many illegals into coming into like where we're at and they're always just undercutting us so we're gonna have to come up with some way to you know charge it yeah. differently blah 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 what would you say to that contractor matt are you trying to light my fuse and get me going here man Those, <laughs> yeah um <laughs> a little bit well, listen if, if you're pointing to whoever's in the white house the economy the illegals uh the unlicensed guys uh, any of those things is why you're not selling more and you're profitable. You're full of crap. All right. Let's get that out of the way. Um, you're a victim and victims don't win at a high level. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now these are conditions. They're field conditions or, you know, I was a football coach for 17 years. Sometimes, you know, it rains. Well, both teams got to play in the rain, right? So in the mud and all that stuff. So you've got to find a way to win. Mm -hmm. And so the other thing is price. Um, there is a certain amount of people, consumers, that price is the guiding factor, but it's a mm -hmm. very much smaller piece than most contractors think it is. All right. Most people, price is like fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth on the list. Mm -hmm. The reason they give you pushback on price, most people, the reason they want you to break your bid down 17 ways from Sunday and mm -hmm. itemize this and itemize this is they don't trust you. Mm. Okay. And in the absence of trust, everyone's the same when it comes to now you just you you just mm. compete on price. Mm. So let me rewind, you know, our, our painting business back in the early 2000s that I had, and I, I got out of it in 2012, sold my half of the company. We were doing hundreds of paint jobs a year. And um, the last few years, I um I those I came across a guy named Marcus Sheridan. A lot of you guys might know the name. Okay. Uh, he wrote a book called They Ask You Answer. I think you need to all go buy the book. He is a pool guy that saved his business through creating content that built trust in short. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's now one of the top speakers, marketing guys in the world. Um, he's he's a really good buddy of the fight. We've had him do private workshops for our community and keynote our events and things like that. So a great relationship with Marcus. Well, I knew Marcus before Marcus was like Marcus, right? This mm -hmm. was back in 2009, 2010. Before he was cool. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, before, you know, when he was kind of getting going and it planted a yeah. seed in me and I'm like, all right, if it could work for a pool guy, I think it'd work for a painter. Mm. So, dude, we started, this was like um, before video is what it is now for a lot of people that are younger. There was a time where it took like seven hours to get a video uploaded to your computer and stuff. It was yeah. crazy. Um, and, you know, filming and video and posting and lives wasn't a thing. But what was really big at that time was blogging. Mm. Okay. And because um, if you all go to, whether you write articles for your website now, whether you do video, I don't care what you do. If you go to Google right now, go to an incognito window where you don't have a search history and you go, say I'm a painter, interior painting prices, Colorado Springs, where I live, hit enter. Mm. You're going to see that most of the uh, and you know this, Matt, like when you start typing something in Google or YouTube, it auto populates what people search for. Yep. So if you want to know what you need to create content around, create content around the stuff people are searching for. Well, at the time and still today, price is one of the biggest things a consumer is going to search for. And so we chose that, and it's still this way in the contractor fight and every other business that I, I own or co-own right now. Or I'm a partner in our number one marketing strategy overall is to be the best educators in the industry. Very cool. So to date, we've have we have over 1,100 free videos on YouTube teaching contractors how to price their work, how to sell whatever. Um, you know, we've got over I think we're 900 podcasts, the Contractor Fight podcast. You know, we've been doing this for quite a while. I, I personally, okay, now I have a, I have a team, but I who also does other things. Dude, I personally post 140 times a week. Okay, 20 a day. Yeah, uh, one day might be 15, and another's 30 or whatever it is. But it averages. That is the standard we've set. And I have a yeah. little help, and I get that. But my point is, and the whole goal is that we are the best educators. Back to your contractors. Yeah. When when you create a post on how much does it cost to paint kitchen cabinets, when you type that into Google right now. Angie's List, um, Home Advisor, yeah. you know, all these other third party sites that have are answering these questions and they're written by some moron intern who just got out of college and has no clue. Yeah. Right. They don't know. But when you create the content, you're going to rank organically right there in your area when you do this consistently. Okay. How are you doing? Yeah. So, dude, we back to my painting company, interior painting prices was one of those search terms that we really wanted to go after. So we educated everybody on our website, our social media around what things cost. Yeah. And you type, there was a point in time after three months of just blogging twice a week, this is yeah. like 2010, so it was easier, right? Um, we owned eight of the 10 organic spots on Google for anything that had to do with painting prices in our area. And it became a point where pe we taught people in these articles how to price mm. their own work. Mm. Hey, if you got a 12 by 12 bedroom with eight foot ceilings, there's actually 384 square feet of wall space. Mm. We're not deducting openings, right? And, you know, if you divide that number by 100, or, you know, we converted it in different ways, but basically something in that space is going to be 500 bucks to paint with a whatever, without a lot of wall prep, whatever yeah. it might be. It got to the point where I would go knock on a door, I'd come into the house and I'd do my thing, hold up my little tablet and go, it's 5,600 bucks. First time this happened, I go, it's 5,600 bucks. Hus husband and wife, she looks at her husband and she goes, suck it and flips them off, okay? They had a bet on how much it would be and she was within a hundred bucks. Okay. And I said, how did you get within a hundred bucks? She says, it's all <laughs> on your website. So trust was already built. That whole transparency yeah. thing was already built. Now there's a lot of contractors and I'm going to pick on the painters because I was, I, I'm one of you guys. Okay. You all complicate everything. Painters, mm -hmm. you are the worst in the world because I'm one of you. I know this, you guys fight this pricing thing and all this content stuff, like nobody's business. And it drives me crazy. I want to punch you in the face. All right. <laughs> so educate people in your marketing okay and then when a piece pops off that's popular that's getting good engagement mm. matt can take it and run an ad to that baby and your phone is going to light up that. yeah okay and you got to be consistent so be an educator uh, if you want to stand apart because when you're an educator remember 
It's about building trust. It's about building authority. Yeah. Experts make more money. Yeah. So if what's the story you're telling by all the content that we did yeah. back in the day, we were the company to hire because of all the free content, educational stuff yeah. we put out there. And a lot of guys are afraid that their, con their, their competitors are going to see what they charge. Who cares? Stop giving a crap about your competitors. Yeah. Let them race to the bottom. Let them undercut you because the right people are going to hire you. And you will actually do less work at higher margins and yeah. you'll have a better life. You'll, you'll, you won't need as big a team and all this other stuff because yeah. of all these, all the trust that's built. So yeah. now I can take a breath because that was a lot. I know I get, yeah, I love I, what I you're talking I get about. fired up about this, be, and, yeah. but but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get after you guys, all right? You fight me on this, all right? You fight me on this stuff, and it's ridiculous. I could point to, you know, one of our coaches in our, in our contractor fight battleground group. His name's Micah. He was broke as all get out in 2017. He jumped into our program. He started creating content. Now he's one of our coaches. But, dude, he, he grew um, from about 1.2 million – almost six million bucks last year and the and he only spends about one and a half to two percent of his revenue on marketing and it's creating content yeah but it's all okay. dialed in yeah it's all dialed in yeah because it's yeah. playing the long game like yeah. you're an ads guy you run an ad if you don't keep paying for the ad it goes away yeah when you create content that's on yeah. youtube that's educate it lives forever absolutely so it's an investment and so i want to encourage you all to be different and just hit record Okay, Love it. just do it. Don't overthink it. Um, and over time, it's compound interest. Yeah, like going to the gym. You know, you you get stronger and better at something over time. You're gonna suck in the beginning, and it's okay. I love what you're talking about, man. Because one thing that we teach and we focus on heavily is what I was mentioning to you before: is positioning, right? And really what you're talking about here is like the educator, right? The guy that people are going to go to for the information is the guy who is positioning himself as the authority, right? Yeah. You were talking about how guys will like bust you up on that tip. Something that we get yeah. busted up on is where we start telling someone, man, you need to find a niche. You need to start niching your mm -hmm. business a little bit and be a specialist in a certain area yeah. because being yep. a specialist, experts are going to get paid more. That's what you were saying, right? If you're mm -hmm. thinking about the heart surgeon versus the general doctor, the heart surgeon 100%. is a specialist. He's going to get paid more. So sometimes we'll get contractors and they'll tell us, Matt, I don't want to over specialize because I'm going to miss out on all these opportunities. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about that kind of mindset? Yeah, I, I, I'd love to talk about that. So the, the fear is, like you said, I'm going to miss out on all these other things. Hmm. In the transition, like if you wake up today and you go, all right, I'm, if you're a general contractor, let's just use that. Your GC, remodeler, we do all things remodeling. If you woke up today and did an exercise where you said, okay, what types of projects are a joy for us to do and that we're most profitable on and that we're really amazing at, right? Like you do the whole thing and you yeah. draw, what do they call the three circles where they intersect? Yeah. I forget the name of that thing, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, diagram something. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah whatever. We we don't need to know. Um, <laughs> they get the point. Say it. Say it ends up being bathrooms. We like every bathroom we do. We knock out of the park, right? Uh, it, they're just they're they're easy for us. They're super profitable, meaning fifty percent gross profit or better. That's our standard in our world, and um, and they're a joy to do, right? Like we just we're we're kick ass at it. We make a lot of money and we're having yeah. fun. Okay. You're my, the way I recommend and coach people is from this day forward, the only thing you ever talk about market, spend money on whatever is bathrooms. Okay. Now you might still have some services on your website and, and, and over time, I think you could take those off, but what's going to happen is you get more of what you focus on. So you will start to get more bathroom leads. And then when the other leads are coming in, you can cherry pick them. If it fits, you got an opening, you can go, hey, normally this other type of project we would charge 10 grand for, we're going to charge 20. And if we get it, we'll give them a great experience. We'll make a shit ton of money and we're all happy, right? So it gives you options. But 100%, 
you know, I always use the knee surgeon versus the general practitioner, use the heart surgeon, right? They specialists make more money. And then back to what we were talking about, about education and marketing, it's easier to get in the groove of creating just bathroom content. I mean, you could do a thing on the, my top five favorite towel bars. Okay. That's yeah. that. I mean, cause it has something to do with a bathroom. Yeah. Okay. We did this with our painting business. Like, if we did 300 jobs in a year, maybe 40 of them were an exterior. Mm-hmm. Okay. We were in the Midwest. We had weather, we had winter. We wanted to build a business that wasn't dependent on mother nature. Yeah. So, you know, and our, the strength of our crews and all that other stuff were just, it was geared towards interior or super clean and easy to work with, whatever. So, Yes, we had exteriors on our website, but we never ran exterior ads. We never, you know, really pushed them on social media other than, hey, we're painting this exterior. But all of our content, dude, was pretty much geared towards interiors, interiors, interiors. And we got to a point where, you know, I don't know the percentage, but 75, 80% of our work easily and our leads was interiors yeah super cool and it's like the more in- interior jobs you land the more pictures you have the more testimonials you have mm-hmm. for interior so it's like a flywheel right yeah but then we would market to our existing customer base that hired us for the interior and we'd go hey do you know we paint exteriors we do drywall repair we could do a yeah. deck we can do so a on fence the sales end, whatever so you're optimizing the sales mm-hmm. on the back end but the front end the face of the business is niched and specialized yeah. Yeah, then you can upsell and all that stuff because we, you know, you got lifetime value of a client and stuff. You know, yeah. you might do a five hundred dollar room that turns into fifty grand over the next three years with somebody. Yeah, you know, very cool. Yeah, something yeah. that I wanted to touch on is that you're also pretty big into teaching sales, sales processes, and such like mm-hmm. that. A lot of contractors that we talk to or we start working with, they're like, "I don't have a CRM. What's a CRM?" What's yeah. like this? They don't really have any kind of back end. A lot of these guys, the way they'll run their business from my perspective is they'll just take leads as they come. And then like if that person says, oh, I need to think about it, they'll be like, here's a business card. Like, let me know when you want to do it type thing. Yeah. Talk a little about yeah. the back end of that. My first two years in business, give or take a couple months, my CRM my database, if you want to call it that, was, you know, it could be a scrap of wood that I wrote somebody's phone number on that was in the <laughs> dashboard of my truck. It's a little piece of paper that I can't find. It might be an email that I sent, whatever it is. And I went back and did the math. It cost me at least two million bucks over the course no of way. like three years in repeat business and things like that. So I want to back up. You work really hard to get the phone to ring. You work really hard to get somebody to fill out a form on your website, respond to the ads that you're running. You yeah, work really and, hard and, to yeah. Yeah, build it, build relationships and things like that. Every single contact that comes into your business, whether they hire you or not, should be stored and marketed to for eternity. Because mm-hmm. you never know, like a lot of guys, and I used to do this where, you know, Matt, if you called me and we gave you a bid and you hired the other guy, I'd be like, you're dead to me, right? Well, you don't know if they ever did the job. You don't know if, if they had an issue, they don't, you don't know what, maybe they had a bad experience, but their neighbor wants a paint job Mm. or whatever. And they're like, don't hire these guys. I should have hired these guys because we had a lot of that. So Mm. you, you work hard to build these relationships, get the phone to ring. Um, there's an old saying in business that the money's in the list, right? And, you know, it's the same with the contractor fight. Our, we focus, our number one metric we track every day is email subscribers today. Mm. Every day at 11 a.m., I get a notification from our CRM of how many we've added in the last 24 hours because that's our metric. Every business is going to have their own, right? Yeah. So um, now people make this harder than it needs to be, all right? Um if you're like me, you're not good at administrative tasks, okay? So you know what you do? You charge enough so you can hire a virtual assistant or a part-time assistant or office man or whatever, all right? A lot of you guys that are listening to this, your first hire should be an assistant mm. because when I look back at all the contacts that I didn't put into our database in the early years, it ended up hurting us in the long run. 
and then we figured it out and this and that, which is good, but mm-hmm. don't make that mistake. Your, um, uh, you know, for instance, when we started focusing on our database, we would send, remember I told you earlier, we would, we were creating all this content to educate. So it might be, um, how do I, how do I touch up a wall after my house has been painted? Cause I got a four year old who wrote crayon on, on the wall. Right. So yeah. we would create an article that was that, what, so let me back up. We did a, we, we did a lot of email marketing to our database yeah. so, and it wasn't like, Hey, buy our stuff. It was value things made their life easier, solved a problem, whatever. And for every 10 of those, maybe one would be like, you know, Hey, we have an opening in three weeks. If you want it, reach out super casual type thing. When you add more value, you take the content you're creating, you're adding more value. These were the types of email we sent. We sent one a week at the time. Um, I want to say we had maybe 2,000, no, three, two, about 3,000 contacts in our database. And 1,200 of those were, you know, customers. Okay. When I first started tracking this stuff. Mm-hmm. And then it grew through the years. When I had call it a thousand people and we'd send an email or 3,000 people, I'd send an email. We brought in no less than five to six thousand dollars a week in work just because of email marketing. Okay. And then that grew through the years, you know. So it uh, referrals would go up because you're top yeah. of mind. Um, you know, you're educating and adding value. Most companies, when they send emails, they're just asking for stuff. Give us money, give us money, give us money. We're running yeah. a sale. We're running a sale. Now you're just like everybody else. Yeah. Um, I had, uh, we have one contractor that, uh, his wife makes this monster Christmas cookie, man. And everyone in the world wants it. So they send a recipe out every <laughs> December going, here's my wife's recipe and people eat it up. No pun intended. I had a realtor friend. Um, and she, this is years ago, she sent recipes out every month. And if she didn't send it in a month, she got hate mail from her list going, where's the recipe? <laughs> it could have been for anything. So it doesn't always have to be about your thing, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, your CRM, you got to have one, man. And people go, what's the best CRM to use? I go, the one that you're going to use. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? There's amazing ones out there and whatever, but um, it's got to be something that you're going to use and, and Another way that you can use this is you ever been um, with a client, you know, maybe you're painting the interior, maybe you're doing the bathroom remodel and just throughout conversation, they go, yeah, at some point we got to get the deck done. Or at some point we're thinking about, you know, just because you're building rapport with them over the course of the project. Well, we call those seeds. Okay. And you go into your CRM and you go, remind me to talk to Matt about his deck next april 15th oh that's smart okay and then a reminder pops up in your crm that your office manager your admin assistant your virtual assistant whatever that pops up you whoever it is and that's where you pick up the phone and you do a video text personalized okay i'm big into personalized stuff um, yeah you know and just going hey matt it's tom just wanted to check in with you i know last year when we were you know doing this you mentioned you know wanting to talk about your deck and i got it in my notes here just want to put it on your radar you know hit me back if it makes sense okay yeah. and so now you're keeping in touch in a way that is personalized man i love it super awesome yeah i think a lot of people don't take that like personal approach or just follow up mm-hmm. like that period so yeah super valuable um Tom, man it's been great chatting with you a little bit about marketing yeah. and sales is there anything that you kind of want to leave uh, contractors with, whether it's talking about sales or marketing or just some kind of big, big idea to leave them with if they take anything from this interview? Yeah, I, I appreciate that. Um, I want to give them something here. It's a tactic that we use and coach on. It's a little deeper than what I'm going to give you, but what I'm going to give you guys will make you some money if you do this consistently. All right. One of our GCs um, sells a million dollars a year from this one thing that takes five to 10, 15 minutes a day. Okay. Um, it's called a, um, unexpected intentional touch UIT. Okay. Um, and not, I explain this in my next book, which comes out in April, 2024. So just, you know, it's called sell unafraid, but 
And it's about ha having discipline, like discipline is going to unleash your sales success. It's not all about the scripts and the word tracks, all of those are important. It's going to be your personal discipline. And this discipline I'm going to give you guys will make you more money. All right. So you go in and um, you have your database that has all your past customers in it, right? People that have actually paid you money, you did a project. So let's go back to the bathroom remodeler. Yeah. Say, uh, Matt, we did your bathroom last year, six months ago, three months ago, doesn't matter. I am going to send you either a personalized video text. I'm big on video because it's just faster. Or I'm going to sit down and I'm going to type an individual test. This is not a bulk thing that you send to your list. This is right. to Matt. Okay? Personalized, yeah. Dude, when I when I speak at events, I have and do workshops, sales workshops. I have all the people in the room send one of these while I'm talking. Wow. Um, did one a couple months ago, and there were probably 30, 40 people in the room for this workshop. And um, and this kid within 15, 20 minutes, he sent this thing, had a little dialogue on the text with his client, and sold a fifteen thousand dollar job while I was doing a talk. Okay. I did a private workshop for a painting company that sold $83,000, $84,000 within a 24-hour period after I had them send this thing, okay? Thanks. Okay, and it's not a sales pitch, you guys. It's simply this. You know, I'll just pretend it's a text. Hey, yeah. Matt, it's Tom from ABC Construction. Um, I was just thinking about the, you know, the bathroom project that we did for you last year. Um, and I was just curious, how's it looking? Hit me back when you get a minute. Okay. What's going to happen is in, and I, I'll give you data here in a minute because we've tracked this, tested it. You are simply number one, given a crap about them, right? Most people hire a contractor and it's wham, bam, thank you, man. Out yeah. the door. And they never hear from you again. All right. When you reach back out, you show that you care. Number one. Number two, in many of these cases, you're going to create a conversation. Hey, Tom, it's good to hear from you. Bathroom looks great, man. You know, happy new year. And that's it. Great. Okay. But you touched them. In other times, it's going to be, hey, Tom, bathroom looks great. Thanks so much for reaching out. Um, we've been talking about maybe doing X, Y, Z. Or I, was, I just gave your name to my neighbor the other day or whatever it might be. And you create a sales conversation that we teach you how to have that gets you back in the door. So what we found, so the guy, one of the guys that does this, does a million a year, he sends three of these a day every weekday. Wow. Like clockwork. Okay. So that, that ends up on the number of working days a year, around 800. He sends a year. 5%, and this is the company-wide data that we've tracked. So if you send 800 times, what, 0 0.05. Damn it, 800 um, <laughs> times that is about 40. Yeah. 40, 40 new or repeat business projects from doing this times your average job size. Wow. Think about that. It's a free yeah. lead. It's a free at bat. It's a free opportunity. And I've seen people have no work on the calendar. We're recording this on January 31st, 2024 right now. And this is a time of year where a lot of contractors are looking for a bridge to jump off of, okay, because the phone ain't ringing. And so <laughs> I always did in February until I started doing these things as a painting contractor, man. It was just a dark month for us. And, um, you know, if you, if you simply do this and have the discipline to be consistent and your expectations are, I just care about people, yeah, it's not. I'm not trying to sell stuff. Okay, that's going to come through, and the opportunities are going to present themselves. I promise you. The second thing that I want to give you guys is what we call the warranty call. Hey, Matt, it's Tom with ABC Construction. Okay. By the way, this is rooted in people are like 85 percent more likely to give you money when they've already given you money. Hundred percent. This is why your your database and your past customers are a gold mine. So, Matt, it's Tom with ABC Construction. Did your bathroom last year, super fired up um, that you had us in and appreciate it. Um, it's, and this, this is a, a text or a personal phone call or a video, right? However you want to do it. Um, emails sometimes get lost, which is why mm -hmm. I like calling or whatever. 
Um, we did your project last June. It's now, or let's say April, and it's now going into February. It's time to set up your warranty visit. They're going to go, what's that? You're going to say, we like to come out and put eyes on the project to make sure that if anything isn't what it's supposed to be, it's our problem and not yours. Okay? Mm -hmm. So most companies run from warranty work. And yeah. they don't want to bring things up. Okay, now, if, if, you're, if, if you were to call me, I'd be like, and not do these calls, and Matt called me and says, hey, we got an issue, 99% of the contractors are going to go out there and take care of it. But what yeah. you're doing is you're being proactive about yeah. it, where you go, because the goal is I want to get my feet in the property again. And we used to do it where we would send the crew leader who did the job back out there. And they'd be right. like, oh, Jose, it's good to see you again, and because they had that rapport. And Jose would go out there, or Nathan, or Tony, or whoever our crew leaders were, and sometimes it's you, right? And, and you walk the project for 15 minutes with them, and a lot of times you're going to uncover some things that we all know our trades. Like I could look at an exterior window sill, right, and tell you if it's going to start peeling or whatever. So yep. you know, we just knock it down with a knife, we sand it a bit, spot prime it, grab some of the touch-up paint, throw it on there. And we take care of it. Sometimes we even wow. tell our guys to find find something to do. <laughs> wow. Right. Okay. And so what's happening here is you going out and caring enough creates uh what, what kicks in the law of reciprocity. Reciprocity, yeah. Okay, you did something nice for me. Now I want to do something nice for you. We found that 35 to 38 percent of the warranty visits we did turned into additional work because it'd be hey, while you're here. We've been thinking about painting Johnny's yeah. room because he's he's now you know um, fifteen, and we figure it's time to get the Power Rangers off his wall, right, or something. So it's like, and you're there, and it's a slam dunk because it's a past customer that already loves you. Yeah. Okay, so the combination of these UITs and the warranty calls we've seen generate. I'm talking guys that are doing two, three, four hundred grand a year in top line revenue, doubling their revenue in a year just from this. Not even getting new leads like yeah. contacts into their database, just going after what's already there. Yeah, I mean, 5%, like you were saying, 5% mm -hmm. people from just sending out that text. Like, I did a quick calculation. If you could make like three to 400 grand, if you have like, yeah. you know, $10,000 job on average, that's crazy. Well, and dude, this replaces here's another thing. And I know we're, we're running yep. short on time here. So um, I'll wrap it up with this. A lot of people come to us and they go, I need to hire a sales guy, right? Mm. And, and, um, or I need to double my leads or whatever it mm. might be. And, and I'm not, I think, you know, what you do with ads and stuff is needed. You got to do that, right? You can't, you got to, if you want to grow your business stuff, you need the phone ringing, right? But there's also low hanging fruit like these UITs and, and touches and warranty calls that your, your, your crew leaders can do with their past customers. It doesn't have to be you, your office manager, your VA, whatever. Right. Like you can train people to do this. But a lot of people come to me and go, I need to hire a sales guy to do prospecting and handle leads and all this and sell stuff. Yeah. When in reality, they just need to take care of the database that they have and you eliminate the need for a salesperson. Because yeah. when you hire a salesperson, you got the commission, you got the additional uh, marketing spend to get the phone to ring. And, and yeah. by the time the profit on each of these shakes out, you would have been better off sending three UITs a day. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Anyway, and at the end of the day, too, it, but I'll shut up there. No, yeah, I'm What's just that? close that loop. At the end of the day, if you're going to spend money on marketing and generate all these leads, like, don't you want to mm -hmm. optimize it on the back end? Like, you don't want to be a leaky bucket, right? Right. Right. So you know, Keith Cunningham, he's an old fart business coach guy, Tony Robbins' buddy, and stuff like that. He has a question. He asks people. He says, "What would your business look like if you still had every customer you ever had?" Yeah. You know, how big would it be? How profitable would it be? So I just think, you know, a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, listen, everyone, me included, we all want new customers. I get that. But um, we are, we're dropping the ball if we're not intentional about this on the, on the gold that's right under our noses with our lists. So. Yeah. Well, Tom, you definitely well, brought the gold yep. today. Appreciate you being you on go, the man. show today, my man. Um, Matt, you know, I appreciate you're it. Easy to, you're pretty easy to find online, but if someone wants to get in touch with you, learn a little bit more about your programs, the contractor fight, anything like that, where can they go? 
Contractorfight.com is our hub for everything and obviously on Insta and stuff. But um, if somebody wants help with uh, selling, we got a free thing they can get at the contractorfight.com forward slash cheap. It helps you identify the tire cheap tire kicking customers before you ever waste a bunch of time on them with a few questions you can ask them and, and they can grab it there. So perfect. I'll put the, that link in the show notes so then people can grab that. You got it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Tom, thanks again, man. And uh, we'll talk again real soon. Bye-bye. You got it.